Hey everyone, this is DWS Darius. If you know me, you know I love my predatorial fish. These are the fish that get the biggest spotlight on my channel. However, out of all my aquarium fish, I have mostly herbivores and omnivores. Now with all aquarium fish, it's important that you feed them a nice healthy diet of things that they would naturally eat in the wild. Now to be honest with you guys, I don't believe I was providing a complete diet for my herbivores and omnivores. And that's because I just was leaving out the greens too much. They need their vegetable based diets and I just wasn't feeding it to them. And that's because I like to feed fish what they like to eat, which isn't a good thing. Any parent that feeds their children whatever they like to eat is going to end up in a bad situation with unhealthy children. Same thing with your fish. If you feed them whatever they want to eat, you know, they want the worms, they want the high protein foods. In the long term, it's not going to be good for them, especially if they're not meant for that type of diet long term. My predators, they eat that food nonstop and it's not a problem. However, with these fish that naturally eat more greens, it's important to include those greens. Not only does it affect their immediate health, but it also could determine how long your fish lives. It could determine the amount of color that your fish is showing. It can even affect the behavior that your fish demonstrates in the aquarium. So it's very important that you make sure you include your greens and your vegetables and your fish's diet. From there, I just started doing more research on different vegetables I could feed my fish. And you know, you have the common ones that we all know about, like lettuce. I used to feed my fish lettuce all the time. The only thing about lettuce is that it's very low in nutrition. Um, they call this an empty vegetable. And that's because it just doesn't really have as much nutrients as some of the other vegetables. So that's the reason why I'm leaving lettuce alone for now because it's, the fish like to eat it, but it's not really as beneficial as some other vegetables. Um, you have peas, I like to feed peas. However, when I feed peas, you gotta peel them and it's just such a headache, it's not that easy. Um, you have zucchini. Some of my fish just don't eat zucchini. That's weird because before all my fish used to love it, maybe I just have to find new ways to offer it to them. Um, my fish are a little bit shy and timid, so maybe that's the reason why. Um, but I was looking for something that was just more leafy. Spinach is a good option. It's just um, spinach, the leaves are kind of small. And as I was just going down the list, surprisingly, I saw dandelions. Now this for me was extremely shocking. Dandelions is a weed in my yard that I'm always trying to get rid of. And it's just always coming back. It's a very dominant plant that you see everywhere. And yet it's on this list of beneficial vegetables. So I did some more research on dandelions. And it turns out that not only is this plant edible, but it's also highly nutritious. It's even said to be on the same level as spinach. And we all know spinach is a superfood. Now, of course, being that I had dandelions in my backyard at the moment, I had to try it. So I went, grabbed me some, gave it a nice wash, put it on a little clip for my fish, put it in an aquarium, and this is what I saw. out that dandelions is a plant that grows in my backyard that is highly nutritious and on top of that which is the most craziest 
my fish actually enjoy eating it. So I've been feeding dandelions from my backyard to my aquarium fish for about a week straight and the results have been pretty epic. My Vieja and my 350, they love it, especially my Vieja by Fasciatis. I'm thinking that maybe because these guys are just small and they want to grow, they're going to eat whatever they can and they've been destroying this stuff. My Silver Dollars and my 210, they love it. My tin foil barbs, they enjoy it. And it's amazing to have a source of food like that in my backyard. So now I'm going to give you guys a look at how I collect this stuff, how I prepare it, so that you could give it a try in your aquarium. Okay everyone, so we're getting ready to collect some dandelions. I already um, gathered a few leaves, but I'll just do it all over again to show you guys how I do it. Um, I have dandelions everywhere. You come out here, and right here, yellow flower. That's the best way to identify a dandelion, these yellow flowers. Um, they're everywhere, all over the yard. However, when it comes to collecting my dandelions, I'm only going to collect them from this area. One is because I don't want any dandelions that's exposed to pesticides or um, any weed treatment or anything like that. Now, I don't use any pesticides or weed treatments, but who knows if the city comes around and gets the sidewalk and things like that. So I'm just going to be collecting from this area that's blocked off and I'm 100% sure there was no pesticides used in this area. If you do use anything that has pesticides, there's a good chance you can nuke your aquarium, kill all your fish, kill all your beneficial bacteria, and you definitely don't want that. I'm also collecting on this side because it has this fence and it keeps out the dogs. And look at Juno, he has a nice haircut. But I mean, keeps him from going over there peeing on all these plants. Um, you can probably wash off any plants that have pee on them. However, I just prefer to not deal with pee in the first place. So yeah, we come over here and we begin our search for the dandelion. Now these plants, e very easy to distinguish. As I showed you guys, they have that nice flower. None of the ones back here has the flower. However, the leaves on dandelions, look at this. This used to be my pond. Um, they did the roof on the house and they dumped all the shingles into this pond. On top of that, all my plants. I guess they didn't know it was a pond. They dumped all the plants aside and I came home mad and I just took a sledgehammer to the front Realized I didn't have anywhere to put the bricks, so I turned into a planter. Um, but yeah, dandelion super easy to distinguish, even if they don't have a flower. For example, right here is a dandelion. You can see, look at the leaves. There's no mistake in a dandelion. It has these leaves that are like so sharp at the edges, kind of shaped like a feather. And then you can see we have flowers coming up. So we have a dandelion right here. We have another one right there. This is the one I was stepping on. Um, come over here. This is the one I've actually been um collecting the most from because this was the biggest. Another distinct feature of the dandelion is these little things that I used to call wish makers as a kid. And this is pretty much how a dandelion reproduces. You go and the wind comes or some little kid comes and blows it. I can't do it. Um, but yeah, this sends out those seeds everywhere and that's why you have dandelions everywhere. There's back there a little flower of a dandelion sticking out and that's why dandelions are weeds. That's why they're everywhere because they have one of the most superior ways of um sending seeds everywhere but yeah this is a dandelion you can see those distinct leaves and basically what i do is i never um now that i know that this is a good source of food for my fish i never just rip up the entire plant i take a leaf from here a leaf from that one a leaf from all the individual plants and that way they continue producing more leaves and i have a continuous food source so yeah i already plucked some leaves up earlier and I'm going to use these. I'm going to use these to feed the fish. After I collect them, I bring them in the house and I rinse them in hot water. Um, the main reason why I rinse them is to move off all of the dirt. If there's any hitchhikers, most of them will be removed with the hot water. However, my theory is that if there's any tiny microscopic hitchhikers, if I put them in the water, they will die because I believe that most terrestrial hitchhikers are not able to survive in water, so the threat is eliminated. However, if you don't believe that, you can just go ahead and boil it and that will definitely eliminate all possible threats. From there, I just use an algae clip and I pin it to my glass aquariums. When I put it on my 210, the suction cup doesn't really stick to the acrylic, so I just allow it to sit on the bottom like a little anchor holding plants down, and the fish pretty much enjoy it just like that. But yeah, everyone, just an aquarium hack I wanted to share with you guys. Dandelions, they are edible, not just for fish, for humans as well, so maybe one day I'll try it. But um, it's just super convenient to have that source of fish food in my backyard. And not only is it convenient, it's also healthy for my fish. And it's definitely worth sharing. So I'm just going to finish this video out with some clips of my fish eating the dandelions. And um, hope you guys enjoy.